to the meeting. All right. Well, thanks again for joining. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking about everything you need to know to buy your first home, things to do to prepare to buy your first home. There's a lot of, uh, you know, people that are discouraged out there, and we're going to we're going to go over everything to kind of uh, cater you along with uh, understanding that it is possible to buy a home. So real quick, a little bit about me. My name is Steven Koza. I'm the founder of the Koza team. And um, I was professional cyclist over in Europe for a decade before I came back to Sonoma County to uh, to be a real estate agent. And um, now I've got the Koza team. Started that um, about 11 years ago. And since we've been helping buyers and sellers buy and sell homes, I've been uh, supported by Stuart and his help with uh, our buyers, borrowers uh, loans to buy homes. So it's been awesome, the, the help from someone that's a friend, but also someone I trust and is on it. So thank you again for coming and being a part of this. Thanks, Stephen. And I'll just kind of mention what uh, um, a little bit about me. I've been in the business uh, uh, about 30 years um, uh, and uh, closed over 1.2 billion in closed transactions. I've worked with Stephen uh, what, about 10 years now. Yeah, I think we're working together. I've done a lot of first time home buyer, um, you know, first uh, entry level buyers into the market and can definitely uh, touch base on the financing for that and kind of answer any or just go over what the, uh, you know, uh, how that all works and, and uh, you know, hopefully answer any questions anyone may have regarding financing. Awesome. All right. So we're going to jump right into it. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment and we'll answer those questions at the end. Um, so let's see, let's jump right into it. Um, we're glad to have all types of buyers here, but definitely this is a first time buyer, um, you know, class. So whether you're renting and you're low on funds for the down payment, but you have a good income. You could be one of those people. Um, you could be someone who's re uh, renting with, you know, funds for the down payment, but you fear home ownership. So that's another thing that's going on right now, um, especially with millennials, because they kind of they live through the hardships of 2008, and we'll cover all that. And then um, let's see, we're going to cover renters that want to invest in real estate but need to keep renting. So we'll cover that kind of a situation. And then renter uh, living in a home with roommates. So we'll talk about tricks and tips for being able to buy uh, with different situations. All right, so let's switch that one. All right, tonight we're going to talk about, we're going to definitely go over a market update. The first thing anybody ever asks us usually when I'm walking around town is, how's the market? And um, the next thing we're going to cover is interest rates. So we'll go over the interest rates. That's going to be Stewart's uh, cup of tea. Uh, rent versus own, you know, what are the benefits of home, home ownership, tax benefits, et cetera, and what are some of the downfalls of it, and then how to buy um, your own home uh, with types of loans, um, going over the PITI, tips and tricks, savings for down payment, and alternative down payment funds. So we're going to cover all that. All right. All right. So um, let's see. Okay, next thing. Be fearful. I love this. This is a Warren Buffett quote. Be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are feel fearful. And right now is a time where people are definitely fearful. What are, you, are you hearing that with borrowers? Oh, yeah. No, that people are definitely uh, fearful right now. So the home prices, uh, interest rates, cost of insurance, you know, things like that. But we can definitely um, talk about those and, and what the numbers are and, and uh, kind of put shed some light on where that is currently with the market. Yeah, definitely. The fear, the perspective is like a huge thing that can control what happens with the housing market. And um, I can't wait to show you guys a graph that I actually pulled off the internet this morning. And it talks about the cost of renting or buying from 1970 till now. And you're going to see this graph that's like, it actually looks scary, but we're going to explain why it's really not scary. Um, and it's all about perspective. So um, yeah. Yeah. So how's the market? Real quick, supply and demand is always an issue. Um, right now, inventory is low. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's going to be low for a long time because think about this. If 30% of homeowners in America have an interest rate lower than 30% and so many have an interest rate lower than 3 to 5%, they don't want to sell right now because they have a great interest rate. Um, so that locks up so much inventory. But it's a great opportunity for people that um, are still in the market wanting to buy because the rates are higher right now and you have less buyers because there are less of that. Buyers, yes. Um, but you can always refine it. So we'll go into all that. Um, past and present and future. Um, you know, 
you're going to see some graphs that show what happens during slight recessions, corrections, and all that, and then what it means for long-time home ownership. So um, we're going to go into all that. This is a really neat graph. I love it. It's one of my favorite ones since I got into real estate. Every year I look at it. It shows the median home price um, over a long span time period. So this is from 1990 all the way till 2023. And you can kind of see here all the ups and downs and dips. And when you own a home, it's it's a long-term investment, you know, anywhere from six, seven. Average homeowner has their home for about eight years. Um, but this graph was really interesting because people fear the market crashing right now. And in the in the history of the US, you know, the nation. That's only happened over the past 30 years, 40 years. It's only happened a few times and they're little blurps. They're little small ones. This was a big one. That was because of the, the housing subprime, crash. subprime mortgage crisis. Yeah. Yep. Really, you know, bad loans and uh, low, low down payments. Uh, if you watch the big short, it goes over all that. But we're not facing this right now. And we were talking about it today at our um, team meeting because homeowners have equity in their money. So in their homes. So if they bought here, look at all this equity build they have. So why would they need to foreclose? A bank isn't going to take the property from them. So just to wrap it all up, we're not going to see another foreclosure crisis. But, you know, no one has a crystal ball here. But signs are looking pretty good for real estate. Um, this is a new little graph. It shows owning versus renting. The red one is renting. And then it shows the city. So like San Francisco, there's more rent, you know, high percentage of, uh, of renters. 62% rent in San Francisco, 38% own. And then if you come down to Sonoma County, it's 3961. So you've got more homeowners than renters. And this graph has definitely gone, the rent has gone way down. You know, since when my parents were buying the baby boomers, a lot of them owned homes and, you know, they worked to buy a home. And now it's, you were getting kind of this like renter generation, um, but it doesn't need to be that way. So we're going to kind of, you know, change some of those myths and give you some hope here. Um, I can remember when I was in high school, my grandma, she wasn't really my grandma, but she kind of was my grandma. She wasn't related, but she was basically like my grandma. She invested in real estate. She saved all her money, bought one real, rental after another. And I remember saying, I want to be like Sylvia. And so right out of high school, my goal was to save money and buy my first home. I was like determined to, because I, I realized how important it was for home ownership. And um, you guys can do that too. You, it's, it's never too late to, to start saving and to start coming up with a plan and after this, we're going to invite you to have a meeting, have coffee with us, meet with Stuart and come up with a plan so that if it's now three years, five years, 10 years down the road, you have a goal and a plan to where you can buy a home, whether it's here, out of state as an investment property or whatnot, we're going to help you sort out what you want to do. So interest rates, let's go all into that real quick. Uh, interest rates are nuts right now, but what does it mean? What are you seeing? What's going to happen in the future? So uh, lately, right now, we're pushing 7% on interest rates. You can still get 6%, uh, high sixes, um, depending on which blender you go through, but you can still get the high sixes with FHA, which is first time home buyer um, uh, product, and also conforming, which is Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. Um, and so uh, that's about where the rates are at. They're, they're averaging, I think, around 7.3%. I checked the rate sheets today. You can still get high sixes and no points for those kinds of products. So um, you know, it, it is good to call around and find, you know, the, the quotes and, and the exact rates. Um, we all vary as far as, you know, our, our lending uh, platform. Some people with independent mortgage banks. I'm a wholesale uh, mortgage broker. Um, I can shop the loan. I get very aggressive interest rates and pass them on to the consumer. But um, as far as the overall market for interest rates, the Fed did speak this week. Um, when they raise rates or lower rates, that's not, that's more short-term interest rates. I don't need to get too much into that, but it does affect long term rates like 30 year fixed mortgages when the Fed does speak. So they held on raising rates, uh, but the rates did go up because of his rhetoric on uh, um, on saying he's not going to cut rates anytime soon. So what that does is that moves the market, that moves the bond market, that moves interest rates. So um, I think we're going to stay in the uh, high sixes, low sevens uh, area uh, probably till Q1 or Q2 of next year. Mm -hmm. and, and to be honest with you, Focusing on the rate isn't isn't the important thing to do because the rates are always changing. And here's the thing: you can always refinance. You can always refinance. So what's important is to I, I asked a mentor of mine a long time ago. I said, "Hey, Gene, when I first got into the business, I said, Gene, how do you recommend someone buys a home when it seems like a bad market?" 
how can you do that and feel ethical about it and feel good about yourself? And he says, Stephen, the best time to buy a home is when you can afford the home, when you find a home you like and you can afford the payments and you're comfortable with that. That's the best time to buy a home. Of course, investment properties are different as far as like non-owner occupied, but keep that in mind. Like if you find a home you like right now and, and it works out and the numbers work and the financing works, buy the home. Don't be scared of the rate. Um, and also we'll go into this a little bit later, but don't be scared of, I've heard people, especially millennials say, oh, we don't want to be tied down. We don't want to be locked into an area. Well, buying a home is it's an investment and it's an investment towards your future. And it's not going to be, it's your first home is usually never going to be your, your forever home. So you've got to keep that in mind. It doesn't have to be the perfect thing. It's just a stepping stone, but it's an investment, an investment that's going to help you get to the next step. Um, and that's what I want to kind of drill into, you know, younger people or millennials, my age's minds is that you're not stuck. If you buy a house, you can also always rent it out. Mm -hmm. You can rent it out. You can leverage it and pull money out to buy another home, not a boat, but another home. People in 2007 and five, they were pulling money out and buying boats. Not a good idea, but you can pull money out maybe to do upgrades and so forth. So it's such a good idea as far as actually not being stuck. Getting stuck is when you get, you, you're told by your, um, they're not called landlords anymore. They're called housing providers. When you get told by your housing provider that you can no longer live there and you're stuck trying to find another place, that's the scary thing. So um, we're trying to you know, change that myth there. Um, and, you know, so percentage of cash buyers, this is just a neat graph. The cash buyers have gone up and that's just because of interest, um, rates. interest rates. Yeah. So people are uh, liquidating some of their stocks or they're borrowing funds from family or friends and then they're buying all cash. And then when the rates go down, they'll probably just do a cash out refinance and give those funds back to their family or whatnot and bring it down to like a 20, you know, 20% um, to AD loan, uh, uh, ratio, uh, rent versus own. This is like always the big topic. Should I rent? Should I own? Right. So we're going to show you some stuff here that works, uh, for some people it may not work for others. Renting is not, you know, an evil thing. And if it's something that you need to do in your life at this point, Hey, go for it. But it, it's nice to have a plan to someday not have to rent. And to do that, you've got to, you've got to talk to a professional. You got to talk to financial advisors, talk to Stuart and talk to myself and we'll come up with a plan for you. Um, all right. So going into this, this is the graph I saw this morning. I, I really love it because what it shows is from 1970 all the way to 2022. Um, this is this red line is what it costs to rent nationwide through those years. And the blue line is what it costs for home ownership. So as you can see, home ownership is the highest it's been above renting uh, for over 50 years, they're saying. So it, it's pretty high. And you can see here it was high and here it was high again, and it goes up and down, up and down. The reason why, this is scary, right? It looks really bad. The reason why I wanna show this is I wanna give you an example. So say you were back, say you were you know, ready to buy a home maybe, or maybe rent, continue renting back in 1979. And to purchase a home, your uh, payments were quite higher than renting. It was eight seventy five up here to to own and to have a mortgage, and down here it was three sixty five to rent. But as time went on, rents went up five percent or so. They kept climbing, kept climbing, kept climbing. But your mortgage stayed the same, or it even went down if you refinanced into a lower interest rate. But most likely, it stayed the same or went down a little bit. And over time, by 30 years, you had it paid off. Meanwhile, the person that stayed renting is now paying double what they started off paying. And all that time that you were paying off your mortgage, you were building equity through appreciation with the price rising of your home, the value, and also building equity through paying down your mortgage. It's like your own bank. Instead of paying down your housing provider's mortgage, you're paying down your own. And the last thing is home improvements. So it's like sweat equity, uh, doing things to improve the property, to improve the value. Those are all the benefits you get from home ownership as far as a financial standpoint. Meanwhile, the renter is up here with uncertainty and not knowing. So it's really important if you can, home ownership is- Just goes to show that you have fixed cost with your mortgage. Once you, if you're fixed into a 30 year mortgage, your property taxes, everything's not gonna go insane. You're keeping your uh, cost of living at the same level while everything else rises as far as rents. And and, and your income too is gonna Correct. rise. Yes, so yes. The payments are gonna get easier and easier and so forth. And like what we talked about, we've done this with clients. Well, they'll buy like say a condo for 450,000. You can buy a condo with 3% down. 
on a conforming loan. Um, so for four hundred fifty thousand, you're coming in with thirteen thousand five hundred for a down payment. Yeah. Um, that's not huge, but what you can do is use it as a starter home, get in, live there for a few years, and yeah. then what you can do, you get some appreciation. What Stephen's talking about pay down your mortgage sum you can take that and make a real estate portfolio out of that you can take your first home you can then rent it and then there's mortgage products that will allow you to use the rents on your current home to buy a new one so you don't have to qualify income wise yep. um, for two homes you can use what the current market rents are for your primary now to buy the new primary so there are ways of making uh, it possible for people to afford homes and to build a por uh, real estate portfolio through financing if they do it the right way and also tax benefits too. We'll, we'll go into that, but there's so many benefits. And like what Stuart said, you might be buying a home that's less appealing to you, or it's maybe in an area that you're not so you want. Maybe you're buying, you know, in a different town, you know, from where you work, but you want it to be close to work or whatnot. But here's the thing: it's your first home. It's a step. If you're trying to get that thing that you want forever, that's not the first step of real estate. I remember when I first bought my first home, uh, my realtor Gene, actually, who was my mentor once I got in the business. He said, I said, hey, I want to buy um, a pro I actually wanted to buy like a ranch property or a big property here in Petaluma. And I wanted to build my own home on it and do everything, you know, for the first time. He said, hey, look, first off, you can't do that. <laughs> You're not qualified to do that. And on top of that, like, hey, this is the first step. So I, I got the first step. I actually bought a property. Um, it was an entry level home here in Petaluma. And I ended up living in it, renting it to friends. And then um, eventually we all moved out and I rented it completely. And then eventually after that, I sold it and invested it at 1031 it into another property. And so it's one of those things where you just got to start somewhere, right? So I'm really glad you brought that up. Yeah, no, that, that, that's a big key for, for, for that because you can get into homes and then you don't have to sell them. I mean, some people do. If you have appreciation, you need that, you're relocating or something, you can do either, but you can keep that home and you can yep. rent it out. And yep. a lot of times you'll cash flow on it. When I first started buying real estate, my, my attitude, I was, I was a little bit crazy and a good thing I wasn't married or anything at the time, but my whole attitude was I have the money, I can buy something, buy it. I, I, there was times where I didn't even look at the property. I'm like, just buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it. Because you look at these graphs with the, the median home price, you're like, wow, I want to be on that graph. And I know there's going to be dips, but I'm going to ride those dips out and I'm going to have you know tenants pay through those dips. So there are all kinds of stuff you can do. It's really positive. Now, this is just a quick thing from um, National Association of Realtors. They did a little study on if you were to rent or buy over a seven-year period. This is really cool. The numbers are low. So like renting for 800, mortgage payment for 1,000, they're not very accurate. But it just goes to show you over time, by the time you get to six years, you're going to be totally covered. You're actually going to be saving a lot of money. So um, because as rents go up, this, this is a 5% growth each year, which is pretty high for a home housing provider to, to do that. Um, but it can go up 5% a year. Um, and over time, the, the mortgage is staying the same. And the tax benefits by seven years, you're actually doing a lot better. So that's another thing to look at. Look at the math and figure out what works for you. Um, but like Stuart said earlier, say you don't want to make the payments anymore. You could always just rent it out as well or rent out rooms and gain equity and appreciation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we're not saying to everybody, Hey, right now is the time to buy for everybody. For some people, it's really not the time to buy and that's okay. But um, we're, we we want to help you come up with a plan. Um, the benefits of home ownership. These are, uh, you know, the, the starting off ones are um, equity, you know, financial benefits. So equity gains through appreciation, mm -hmm. paying down the mortgage, um, home improvements, you know, also known as sweat, sweat equity. The tax benefits, so you can write off the uh, mortgage interest and the taxes that you pay on it. Of course, uh, there's also some other things like uh, that's a big one. The non-financial ones, such as security for your family and being able to do what you want with the property. Yeah, you're not dependent on um, what was it? Not the landlord. Would you call it? Oh, housing providers. Housing providers. Yeah. If the housing provider decides to sell and there's a yeah. new buyer coming in or has to do something with the property or something like that, you're not being inconvenienced with, yeah. you know, getting kicked out or doing a new lease or anything like that. So um, that's per, that's that's uh, a lot of security for a family if they don't want to deal with that. Yeah. I mean, it's on one end, if you're having a bigger mortgage and you're maybe pushing the, the comfort on price point you know, you're financially a little bit stressed or you're stressed from having to not own the property and potentially maybe you don't know when they're going to give you a notice to leave, to sell, to, you know, rent to their family member, who knows, right. Um, you know, owning your own home also 
can lead to feeling more connected to your neighbors and your community. Mm -hmm. So it's very, yeah. it's very rooty. And it's, um, it's like, it's like, uh, I call, I call my house, my base camp. It's my base camp and it's expensive here, but you know, it's the base camp for adventure. Like yeah. you live in such a great area. It is a great area. So, uh, all right. Tax benefits. We went into that, you know, you can write off, um, the, the interest tax Property taxes and your interest. Yeah. Yep. And also even in some cases, uh, if you have a home office and closing costs when you purchase. Yep. Uh, now for the fun part, this is where Stuart's going to kind of jump in a lot more. Um, how, how to buy your first home? Because we got to tell you that you're on a first time home buyer webinar. We're going to talk about how to buy your first home and how it's going to work. So here we go. Uh, loans 101. It's a big part of buying a home. Unless you can pay all cash. Most of us are borrowers. In most cases, it's smarter to borrow anyways, even if you have the cash. Um, so here we go. So let's talk about types of loans, Stuart. Yeah. So there's a, a few different loan products. Um, Talking about first-time home buyers and, and, and entry-level people that are getting to the market, um, your loans are going to be more of the FHA uh, conventional, which is your Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac type of loans. Um, there are adjustable rate mortgages. Um, those aren't as popular right now um, just because of liquidity in the market. They're not as that much lower than a 30-year fix, so it's safer to do a 30-year fixed. Um, you know, there's seller financing, and, and uh, Stephen can talk more about that because he has experienced when a uh, you know, seller is willing to carry a note, what that means is you don't have to get a mortgage through me. You get the mortgage through the seller of the property and then you can uh, um, you know, negotiate what the rate is in terms of stuff like that. Um, but there are programs for first time home buyers. So um, conforming loans, the Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac does have uh, incentives on the interest rate for first time home buyers. Um, it does give breaks for uh, uh, the interest rate and cost. And that is uh, based upon an income limit of, of Sonoma County. They look at what your total income is. Are you, have you owned a home in three years? So if you fit that box, you're going to get a lot better interest rate for that type of product. Um, conforming loans uh, um, are, are, are great. Um, they have low mortgage insurance premiums. Uh, let's say you put 3% down. Now say that you don't have like the best credit score um, or you know maybe uh, the income is 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 not the uh, the most that uh, we'd want for conforming loans. So FHA would be another good type of loan product. And the reason for that is it, it it's more lenient on credit scores. You can have a lower credit score. They don't ding you for it as much as say a conforming loan. And uh, they do a higher debt to income ratio cap. You can go up to fifty five percent debt to income ratio on a FHA loan. So um, you don't have to put twenty percent down. You don't have to. Um, you know, have so much income where it's only 20% of your total income for the home. Um, there's a lot of uh, misconceptions out there that uh, I'd be happy to talk to anyone individually if they wanted to talk to me about it. Um, what I do when I talk to clients is, uh, you know, look at their needs, what they're looking to do. And, um, you know, if it's a first time buyer, we'll go over all these programs. You know, this is the payment work. Um, do, do I qualify? What are my costs? All that kind of stuff. So it's just good to talk to someone that has been in the business for a while and know what they're doing and just getting candid advice about what, what it entails to do first time home buying and applying for a loan. Yep. And I'd be happy to go over that with anyone. And also uh, talking to someone who's not going to put you in a bad position too. Like, you know, Stuart really cares about his clients. Obviously I care about our clients. We even have a thing that if you don't like your home, it's a buyer, you know, comfort benefit you know if you don't like your home in a, in a year we'll sell it for free but under a year you want to sell it so it's kind of like um there's no pressure and we want people to be really happy and we really want five-star reviews and people to really love where they live it's important to us and we treat our clients like family all right so the next thing here so yeah so there's a lot more um with, the, with that list you had prior yep do you want to just go back to Oh, that? shoot. Did I cut it short? Yeah, that's right. Go <laughs> there I go. There you go. See? So um, yep. uh, tips and tricks to help make it possible. There's some good bullet points here. Um, good lender. Choose a good lender. Choose a trustworthy lender. You know, ask around and, uh, you know, have they, are they local? Yeah. Or, or are they based out of New York or something like that? You know, you want to use kind of a local lender for, for this market. I think yeah. that, you know, real estate agents, you seeing a uh, pre-approval yeah. letter from someone from Michigan, you're going to kind of question that. But, yeah. I mean, I mean it's, it, it, it's also too like the... It's also the relationship that the, the the lender has with the realtor. So how connected they are to, so like you can go to like Quicken Loans or you can get a loan through Costco now, but the, the scary Actually, part- Actually, they stopped. Loans. Did they? Yeah. Well, that was smart. But, <laughs> but like, like America, you know, you can get loans through these big institutions and um, you're not going to have as many options, but also 
uh, you get a lot of, you're just a number. It's a numbers game. So you don't have the personal support. You yeah. You know, the text yeah. call. Yeah. I don't have answer. to call 1-800. Right. Like, right. That is like, just get, you know, who am I trying to talk to to get this? So, thing so yeah, good thing is getting in, in touch with a good lender. Um, so there's a few things here. There's what, what's it called a two, one buy down. And that has to be paid by the seller. And, and Stephen could talk more about like um, how that would work with a contract and making an offer. Yep. You know, if there's a property with 15 bids on it, it's probably going to be hard to get a nice large seller credit out of them. So, yeah. um, you know, it's more of a property that might be sitting around for a while, but I just did but, one recently um, for a uh, first time uh, a single uh, mom with two kids, did a two one buy down. So how that, that works, say the rate is 6.75 on a 30 year fix right now. And you do what's called a two one buy down. Um, what that does is that reduce, reduces the rate by 2% for the first 12 months. So if you're at 6.75 on your interest rate, you're really getting 4.75 for the first 12 payments. So that's one year. Then the loan, the one comes into play, meaning it goes down 1%. So it goes from 6.75 to 5.75 for the next 12 months. So you have 24 months of payment relief and you're not paying through the nose and the high sixes, low sevens, and you're making your payment more comfortable. Um, that is possible. And I'd be happy to talk to anyone that wants to call me in more detail to go over that, but that's how it works. It goes down 2% first year, 1% second year, then goes back to the original 6.75 30 year fix. There's no adjustments. It's not adjustable, like an adjustable rate mortgage. It's safe. It works. And after that two years, what's probably going to happen is you're probably not going to be in that loan. You're probably going to refinance. In the next 12 to 18 months, they're forecasting that rates will probably go down. Now, there's no crystal ball with that, but that's what the thinking is. And if you know, if you have that chance to have two years of, of relief, mm -hmm. and then you refinance into a lower rate, you're never exposed to the seven percent or the high six rate. So that is a good product. Yeah, it's, it's really popular right now. The seller does have to pay for it. It's not cheap, but it can be done. It can um, definitely be done, especially on homes where the the property is sitting. We are sitting home. We are seeing properties sit now they're overpriced or whatnot right um and so we can negotiate that for you um it, it's really good for for buyers that are you know on the fence of being able to qualify payment sensitive. yeah payments right right and uh, it's not a hard thing to work out so and like right. you said it's one of those things where you're going to you know, hopefully refinance in a year or two, but also your income's going up over the years as well. Right, but you have a good two-year window where you can yeah. bypass this inflation and higher rate you totally. know, scenario. Yep. Who knows? We don't know what we're going through with this, these high interest rates or or the Fed or whatever, yeah. but that is that is a good uh, bet to, to make uh, as far as, hey, I want my payment. I mean, it, it can bring your payment down by like $700. Well, and also you know another I mean? thing so, too is when, when rates come down, if they do, when they do, they get under 5%. Think about how much demand there's going to be in the market. So right. that buyer that you're saying, hey, get in the market, buy the $450 condo. $450,000 condo. Yeah. $450, dollars condo. Get, get in, buy it. You could hold on to that property potentially for two years. Rates come down under 5% and all of a sudden your, your home's worth 10, 20% more. Mm -hmm. It could be another little pop like we saw in uh, in 2020 with the COVID thing when it dipped and then it shot up. Lower rates do bring bring up a, a volume of, of buyers. And you could, sure. and at that point, you could possibly do a simultaneous transaction. Now you've got, you know, five, 10 percent more in equity to roll over into your next property. So right. um, anyways, those are just scenarios. And another um, good thing, you know, uh, Stephen has here on tips and tricks is, you know, if you want, um, obviously, a lower payment, you could put a larger down payment. Um, you know, we can get more of, uh, you know, uh, gifts and stuff like that, which is on there. And I can talk about that. Um, I have ways of, of uh, looking at your credit report and seeing how to get your credit score up. Um, there's there's some easy ways of doing that um, just by looking at the credit report might take six, 12 months for that to happen. But I could be happy to do that with people. So so if someone here uh, want, you know, comes with you, me with you and their credit is you know what's what's a bad credit score what's in the, the fives if you're in the fives yeah. what i would do is look at your credit report and say you know do you have any old collections that you could take off um is there is there anything that you can negotiate sometimes you'll have a credit card that's in a, what's called a charge off charge off stage where you can call them and negotiate for less less than the full balance so if you do that homework and you really hammer the phones and call the, these these you know, collection agencies or even you know the credit card company you can work on that and get them you know paid paid off so that status on your credit report's done. So that improves your credit. And I'd be happy to go over that later. Um, that obviously lowers your debt, which helps, you know, the mortgage rates. Mortgage rates are very based off of, of uh, uh, credit scores. So the higher the credit score, the better the interest rate, you know, so that that does so help that. Work on that. Start on it now. Me with certain, learn how to do that. Learn what you need to do. Right. Um, really good tips there. I, right. I've been very close on my credit score with, you know, getting that higher rate. And it's like, man, I'm so glad I had good credit. Right, right. It's awesome. It's a, you know, big deal. And then co-signers. Co-signers is a good thing as well. Family members, uh, you know, um, friends. 
friends that you want to buy a house with, you can do that. There's a different types of co-signers. There's non-occupant co-borrowers, meaning the person's not going to live there, but they, they help, help you uh, qualify for the mortgage. If your income's not there, there's a lot of different ways to qualify what that means. Um, can you co-sign with a friend? Yes. So yeah, you yes. can co-sign. If we, yeah, if you want to live together, you can you co-sign with a friend. So for example, say you're sharing a, room, uh, a home, you know, four bedroom house with four roommates and you're all renting and one of those people can qualify then they can buy buy a property and then rent out those other three have their have their uh, friends rent from them instead of paying the, the landlord. So that's an awesome idea right there, just to get into the market and start with real estate. Um, you could also buddy up with a friend and co-sign to get and do it together. The house together, or you know the the person doesn't have to live there. You can still buy it together and just co-sign. Yep. They could be on title. You can put it how much right. they're on title or whatnot by a certain percentage. Do you see that a lot where friends are co-signing and I do. together? I do. I see a lot people, a lot more people coming together and pooling and yeah. co-signing together to buy something. Cool. Families, friends, um, yeah. you know, just just so they can afford it. Make so it they, possible. Yeah, so that financially they can make it possible. Yeah. Um, another thing is gift gift funds. Um, that's a, that's a, a big thing I'm seeing now from parents. Uh, the gift funds do have to come from a family member, um, but you know, gift funds can be you know, say someone's buying a home for five hundred thousand, and the parents help them with a hundred thousand dollar gift. That's really nice. Not everyone has that that luxury, yeah. but but uh, you know I do see that a lot with parents and family, grandmother, grandfather, uncle, you know, cousin can help with that as well. So yeah. um, there are ways of qualifying if you don't have enough money and if you don't have enough income, but you have family support, you can make that work. Sometimes they need that little boost. We didn't talk about this too much, and it kind of reminded me it's 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 a different thing, but I've I've seen it down on properties. If, if you're handy, if you're someone that likes to do the work and the sweat equity, there is a thing called a renovation loan. And that is interesting to some buyers because I, we have these first time buyers that come and you know, they say, hey, we want to find a place that we can put some work in it. We're okay with it looking ugly. So there is also the renovation loan and too much to go into now to talk about that, but Stuart will go over it. There's pluses and minuses. Right, right. And yeah. then we talked about the seller financing. If the seller yeah. of the property is willing to finance the note and the mortgage, and you don't have yeah. to go through me. That's that's a good deal. Let's do that. That's becoming more <laughs> That's becoming more popular. You can get a better interest rate with seller financing. Right. And sometimes here's another thing. Say the property's worth 700000 and you only want to, you know, you can only qualify for the, a good rate if it was like, say, six fifty. Well, you can sometimes we can sometimes make it so that the seller will be a second on the seller financing mm -hmm. and then do it that way. Um, it would be a higher rate probably, but it makes it possible for seller you to buy. carry second. Yeah, I've, I haven't yeah. seen those in a few years, but yeah, you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see. and then leverage your 401k. You can borrow against your 401k to uh, and not take tax penalties to buy a home. You can just contact your financial institution. Just depends on what you have in there. But normally you can pull about fifty thousand out without any kind of uh, uh, tax implications. If you're a W two uh, employee, they just what they do is they just take it out of your paycheck every month mm -hmm. to pay it back. So um, ah. that's how that works. And then um, we lost the screen. <laughs> okay, okay, there we go. We're back. And then renting rooms, we could talk more about that. But like it's we what we uh, hit hit on is is um, you know people pulling together and buying homes together. So say you're uh, you know kind of a young professional uh, out of college, have a job, and uh, you want to buy a home, but you're like I don't want to have a five thousand uh, dollar payment. Um, you know, a month. You can have uh, friends rent the room. So say you bought a three or four bedroom. And you had three of those rooms rented out for a thousand dollars, and that would really take down your uh, full, uh, you know, housing payment by just renting the rooms out, you know, to friends. So that that's that's something you could do as well. That's awesome. Thanks, Stuart. I'm gonna get this. Uh, ah, my sister, my my niece is trying to call me. She's uh, stolen my sister's phone and she's FaceTiming me. A little five year old. <laughs> what a stinker. Gosh. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna go to, I don't know what happened to my slide here. One second. I got a little discombobulated here. Oh, Ellie. <laughs> All right. Coming back on, we're coming back on. <laughs> okay, we are back. There you go. Thanks. So, like I said about the renting rooms, you know, there, there's ways of, uh, you know, um, buying the home yourself if you can qualify the income wise, but subsidizing your your mortgage and housing payment with friends renting rooms. Yep. Yeah, that's the other one. It's a great idea, especially for people that, um, you know, they're close to their friends and they want to have their own uh, own their own have a party pad, right? Yeah. Stop listening to the, you know, the landlord, or the housing provider, and uh, do what they want to do. 
Um, all right, saving money for a down payment. So one thing is important to save first then spend. I know that's like, we've all heard that, but it really does help have a savings plan, even if it's just a little bit off your payment, uh, you know, your salary, save first and then uh, spend later because we can always save more than we, we think we can if we do it that way. If we're, if we're spending and, and then we're saving what's left over, it's going to be not as much. So that's something to that and to touch on that, like I mentioned, like you can do down payments of 3% on conforming loans, three and a half percent for FHA, uh, you know, for a 450 purchase, your are 13,500 is a down payment. Yeah. Now there's closing costs on top of that. You can come in with the closing costs or you can uh, have assistance of I'm talking to Steven, if there's a way to get the seller to help you with closing costs. So there's, totally. there's ways of, of working things. If, if you don't have the exact total amount for down and closing costs. You know, there's ways of, of uh, you know, talking to Steve and myself and what, what's the strategy to make that work. Yeah. And, and on top of that, definitely it's important to have it on, on your team is a good financial advisor. So ask us for recommendations, especially if you're in the real starting period of saving to buy a home. You want to talk to a financial advisor because there's different types of savings. You know, if you're a fast saver and you're able to save a lot of money, you have good income, you have dual income, uh, then you're going to want to play it safe. You're going to want to put it in CDs or you know, high yielding savings accounts where you can access that money and it's not going to get threatened from a crash in the stock, you know, stock market. Um, and then if you're on Bitcoin, yeah, you know, it, exactly. You don't want to put it in Bitcoin. So yeah, if you're saving fast, you want to have that money ready to go when you're ready, when you find the home you like. Now, if you're someone who you know needs to save slowly over time, you're just doing a little bit there, your financial advisor is going to probably advise you to be more aggressive because. Um, if you are, you're going to be using those outlets to help you with your down payment. So basically, for instance, Tesla is going to be like a, a family member that gives you money if it does well. I had a friend who in 2020, I did his loan. He, yeah, he did his loan. He invested in Tesla and Red Robin and a few other things. And it just Killed went, it. He went up and he used that money to buy a house and Stuart helped down him. Payment. He helped him. Down payment, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. amazing. So he rode the right market there. And that's really hard to do on your own. Financial advisors are good to do, use it. But that's that's great for someone who's um, kind of kind of not able to save as much and they're going to leverage something else. Um, you can get in, you can even invest in real estate uh, tr trust type things where you own a share of it and you can do it as little as a thousand dollars for some of these things. Um, and then the last thing um, some of you may have enough for a down payment in other markets in this country. So uh, investing in out-of-state markets that are more affordable for rental properties. So if you're someone who's sitting on, you know, 20% down for a home in Orlando, Florida, that's, you know, it's a three bedroom, two bath, 2,100 square foot, perfect rental by good schools. And it's, you know, 350,000, 400,000. And you can afford to buy that as an investment property, do it. I mean, you can get into real estate in so many different ways. You don't have to live in the home you bought your first home. So let us know if you're interested in that as well. Stuart can still do those loans. And I have a network of realtors in my Compass network that are amazing in every part of the country. And um, I can help you find which markets are the best to invest in, where you can get the best price to rent ratio uh, for your money. So that's another thing. Talk to us about that if you're interested. Um, here, alternative down payment funds and tips for mortgages. So where can you get funds from other sources? Getting creative here now. So gift funds from family, of course, that's one of them. That can also be a loan from your family that you're going to pay back someday or from friends. Um, you can also go in with a friend or family member to invest in out-of-state markets. Um, leverage your 401k. You've talked about that. Mm -hmm. Leverage your stock portfolio. Mm -hmm. Rent rooms to help cover the mortgage. Yeah. So definitely hit that. Um, achieve your real estate dreams. Thank you so much, you guys. Um, that does wrap it up. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's any further remarks. If you guys decide to um, meet with us, work with us, uh, for anybody who is on this webinar, um, Stuart's going to give a $2,000 credit towards your closing costs when you purchase your first home. Um, we're obviously going to give you VIP service. We love all our clients. We take very good care of them. And we have a full team to back them up. Uh, you're going to have access to off-market listings. Buyer, we have our buyer satisfaction guarantee where... If you want to sell it, if you're not happy there within the first year, we'll sell it for free. And then there's the competitive offer guarantee where you can make offers with no loan contingency, no appraisal contingency in a lot of cases. So we'll go over all that with you. But the first step is make an appointment with Stuart. His contact info is being blocked by my, <laughs> my little thing there. But um, we're both here uh, based in Petaluma, but we work all over uh, the North Bay. All right. And Stuart works all over the everywhere. 
for real estate, it's a little bit more, you know, where is my zone? Where, where am I experienced in the neighborhoods for, uh, you know, loans? It's a little different. So, right, right. Um, but thank you so much. Appreciate it. I'll send a follow up email to all of you with the recording of this. If you want to share it with friends or watch it again, and um, you'll have our contact info there too, as well. So thanks, Stephen. Thanks, Stuart. Yeah, appreciate, appreciate it. it. Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye.